This is the opening of uh, the Wayans Brothers. <laughs> This is ticket talking mother for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it. And this is ticket talking mother for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it. I'm a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it, get it, get it. Comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it, get it. And this is ticket talking mother for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it. I'm a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it, get it, get it. Comma and a comma. Gotta get it. Welcome to the Taylor Tilton Show. I'm Christy Taylor, and this is. Oh, good morning, Taylor Tilton. Hey, Christy. Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. Let me just start this off. Um, all right. I know, I know. Okay, go ahead, start over. I'll okay, try. Let me Taylor do my best. Tilton Show. I'm Christy Taylor, and this is. Again, I say. Oh, I'm Taylor Tilton. Good morning. Okay, I'm gonna let you have that. I have no idea why you are uh, so low key. First of all, can I give a shout out to Sassy Sandra Hill at 9.30, well, 9.33, 27 minutes before showtime, she had already dropped and said, we ready? So- Well, I, that, that would be 8.33 and not 9.33, but okay, I oh, hear you. That's right, Eight, that, well, 27 minutes before showtime, uh, she said, we ready. Oh, good morning, Courtney Garcia. And happy Taylor Tilton Tuesday. Oh, to you. Okay. And uh, she, he said, don't start the show like that, Tina. I know, right? You cannot. <laughs> I, uh, you cannot I'm sorry, y'all. I, I got a story behind my non-glory. Oh, help me, Jesus. Okay, me, but go ahead. Just say this, though. Before we get started, shout out to everybody who also checks us out on it. Sundays, the replay on Bumper 96.3 FM. I got to show them extra love because they have to put up with our madness in the replay. And uh, I think this is also a great time for us to say that the Taylor Tilton Show is brought to you by Christy Taylor Consulting, the podcast center, Bumper 96.3 FM, and right on radio, 87.7 FM, classic R&B and soul. Can you dig it? I can dig okay. it. Okay, so we've got Go quite a few eat, people. Baby. Go ahead, eat. Go ahead. Oh, Lord. I, I already know something, y'all. Okay, morning, Taylor Tilton Show. San, Sassy Sandra Hill, thank you so much. Uh, Courtney Garcia says, I got an, uh, I'm going to need you to have more energy. We are all trying to catch up on sleep. LOL. What's up, Darius? Darius Moore on uh, Georgia's in the building. Hey, son, Courtney got D Garcia. He does not know what I have been through. Until well, I tell you. Until you. Right, right. But Darius Moore, Mr. GA. Hey, ladies, let's try this again. I know that's right. Let's try this again. Happy Taylor Tilted Tuesday. And shout out to those that check us out on the replay on Sunday. Sandra, he'll say hold on. yes. Okay, huh? Hold on, hold on, hold on. They're, they're blaming me. They want me to, they want to try this morning again because of me. Yes, because you are bringing low energy, low energy. Oh, Lord, Lord, have mercy. Let me start with you. Uh, okay, okay. I see right now that she, yeah, she is bringing low energy, low energy, low energy. All right, so the weekend recap starts off with, first of all. No, 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 don't, don't recap. No, 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 don't recap because it. I, I need to bring my energy up by telling you all what has happened just last night in 24 hours. Tw or should I say 24 hours no, ago? That's going to be so, part of your recap. That's going to be part no, of your recap. No, 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 no. So yesterday, this time yesterday, I had to take my dog, my candy, woof, rough, rough to the vet for her annual shots. Not a problem at all. Mm. When I got there, they did introduce a new medicine to my six pound dog. Well, you want to know what did happen? Why Tina Tills has low energy this morning? Because the medicine that they introduced to my six pound dog did not cooperate with her body. And what? my six pound dog, girl, Christy, I was up all night. 
So my dog has been, um, uh, so when I, when I got her home, did not know that, you know, her body was going to react negatively to that medicine. So yesterday around noon or so, when, when we got home, she was heaving like, mm, mm, and I said, I'm looking at her and I'm going, this is not right. This is not good. So I called the vet again and they said, bring her back. I brought her back. They gave her a, um, a steroid shot. And, and, and at that point, I told my sister, I said, Kennedy looked like one of those grizzly players that when they get injured, they go in the back and they come back out and they got all kind of energy. I said, whatever they put in them shots, oh, Kennedy, must have, Kennedy must have had a grizzly shot. So she came back, you know, super active, not a problem. I said, yay, my dog is better. This is what I know my dog to be. But I got her home again. And when I tell you that dog, um, had allergic reactions out of her mouth and bottom six times out of her mouth three times out of her bottom and of what course what did i do what take her back to the veteran i the did bank. take her back yes i had to the call veteran. them again and then they were on lunch and they said we won't be back until after two after what? two yes i'm serious so we sat here and and i watched my dog heave up whatever was in her system over and over again. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Ooh. So took her back. And, um, the only thing that they could give her at that point was some, um, medication to keep her stomach down, some anti-nausea medicine. So they gave her a shot, another shot for some anti-nausea or, or with anti-nausea medicine in it and sent me home with a couple of pills to also give her and some Benadryl. And I'm thinking, but this dog ain't got nothing on her stomach to be continually, you know, continuously taking all of this medicine. But, um, but nonetheless, when she got home, she uh, just kind of has been not lethargic, but just lying around sluggish it's to the point good. of, yeah, to the point of, I'm like, okay, I cannot. Typically, Kennedy and Olivia, they sleep in the same room. She's Kennedy wow. sleeps in her kennel in Olivia's room and they chill out. But I said, nope, not tonight, Sam. Kennedy is going to have to sleep in the, you know, in our room with us. And, yeah. and so because doing what a mother would do, I'm on, constantly, mother. you know, I'm waking up over overnight, just constantly looking at my dog, making sure I see a, you know, an up and down in the chest. Is her chest going up and down? Is her body going up and down? Oh, is yeah, she yeah, breathing? Yeah. Is she right. breathing? Right. Because I didn't want to be caught with another incident of, <gasps> and I didn't right. hear it because I was tired after all that running around. Yesterday was just not my day. It just did not pan out the way that I thought it would or predicted that it would or, you know, kind of had planned on it, but, that it would. Yes. yeah but you know at the expense of, of of keeping my puppy here dear old kennedy then you know it's, it's definitely worth it but i did lose some sleep last night so forgive me for my yawns but i think now well, that i've got it out of my system, long I'm there. reason her long reason of being low energy yeah, but now that I've gotten it out of my system, I'm better now. So at least y'all know the story behind my non-glory. That's what I was trying to say. That's all I was trying to say earlier. And by the way, happy birthday to Tony Terry. I know that's all, way, all the way left field, but today is his actual birthday. I want to say happy birthday to our right on radio personality, celebrity personality. Tony Terry, his oh, birthday is today. He's 16. He is big six o. He is a uh, milestone birthday. Hey, good morning, Miss New Luella Marshall. She said, "Good morning, ladies." Uh, so, hey. for those who don't know, this is also a great time to remind you all that he will be at Salt Burn Bistro celebrating. I guess he's doing like a birthday tour, or is he just coming here? <laughs> he's just coming here to Memphis, Tennessee, because he is one of our personalities. All right then. All right. And Sassy Sandra Hill said, happy birthday, Tony. And oh, okay. Courtney Garcia said, now you are sounding better. I told you I had to get it out of my system. Like, all right, let me tell y'all the story, but I'm awake now. Okay. Ooh, okay. And he said, hope Kennedy is better this morning. Hey, Cynthia, pull up. Good morning yes. to you as well. Happy Taylor morning. Chilton Tuesday, everybody. Happy Taylor Chilton Tuesday. And uh, now that she has higher energy, maybe we can now have a show. 
<laughs> and a weekend recap. I'm ready. Go on with your weekend recap now. I, I can tell you what happened over the weekend, but uh, you, you're first. I just had to, again, I had to get that out and let you guys know, like, oh, my gosh. Mommy, pet moms, because they can it. Christy, you're not even a pet parent. I you got to get you to weekend, become a pet parent. You need a parakeet this, or something. Oh, a parakeet. Wait a minute. Yeah. I just want to say that this weekend, I almost wanted to become a pet mom until you told me this long story this morning. But I will say because of that long story of low energy, I feel, long. Like, I feel like we need to reset the show. Welcome back to the Taylor Tilton Show. Oh, Okay. Brought to you by Christy Taylor Consultant, the podcast in above 96.3, right on radio, 87.7 FM. Can you dig it? Okay, Can you dig I just it? Really felt like I needed to kind of reset. All right, now we could go into the weekend recap. Are you sure you Come don't want to get this on? Are you sure? Are you sure? Uh, no, probably because my weekend is going to probably piggyback off of yours because we were t together most of the weekend. <laughs> so okay. go on, you go on, tag your it. Tag, I'm it. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, those who know, you know that I have been in sabbatical mode and I have been in Lawrenceville, Georgia, which is north of Atlanta. So I'm not going to say I'm in Atlanta, uh, but I will say that I have been enjoying a season of rest and resetting and renewing. But this weekend, ladies and gentlemen, T Tina Tilton, I'm a blame it for on her. Uh, no, I actually were, was in Memphis. I flew in on Friday mm -hmm. around 1.30, got in around 2 something and, you know, ran some errands because, you know, trying to pick up some things that I needed that was in Memphis. And I went by, I said, well, you know, I've been eating real different here in Georgia, y'all. So I said, I'm going to go to Tom's Barbecue. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Let me go to oh, so you decided to get some Southern cooking down, some Southern, do some Southern eating down here. Let me get some of this Memphis cuisine. And I went to Tom's Barbecue in the hood right there around the corner from Crosstown, which is, what is that? Uh, is that North Memphis. North Memphis, that's uh, Watkins and Jackson. Y'all know where it you is. So. No, you did not go there. And the thing okay. is, I passed some other, because I had actually, the first thing I did is I actually went far east out there uh, to, to 6,000 Papa, where my, my virtual office is, to pick up my mail. And of course, I passed several restaurants. You know, I had, you know, some other little spots, but I ain't one of that, you know, that East Memphis food. I said, let me go back to the hood. I Look even passed one of the tops that's at, what is that? Poplar and, um, uh, 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 not, not, um, I don't know. All I'm thinking of right now is that they said, long story short, is I passed all them other. East Memphis top so I could go to the tops in the hood. And when I tell you, so I could get my turkey burger and my baked beans and my apple turnover and my sweet tea. Uh, and lo and behold, I, I gobbled that food. I was trying to gobble that food up and I was like, it don't taste right. I'm like, oh, have I been eating too clean? But now I can't enjoy my Memphis cuisine. What was happening with it? Well, first of all, I realized I didn't have them put the mustard on. But anyway, so I ah. yeah, I needed mustard to, to counteract that mayo. But I did, I did get chance to, you know, eventually connect with Tina because you know she stays busy. I I now know what her mom and them be talking about how she stay busy because I was like, I'm here, I'm yeah. here, I'm here, I'm here, <laughs> and she was like, Well, I'll see you later on. I'll, I'll connect with you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Courtney Garcia last week, Facebook was tripping, and today, Tina tripping. Oh, Ella, I'm glad she's able to believe. It. I know that's right. Tops, yes, is not what Man. it used to be. You know, something I will say, uh, Cynthia, Dr. Omar Johnson, he will be in Memphis on the third and the fourth. Uh, as a matter of fact, we are advertising them. Yes, uh -huh, I'm going to be at Timeless at 6662 Winchester Road. But I mm -hmm. will say this, that I, I went to Tops. That was part of my, you know, like, ooh, I'm in Memphis, honey. Let me give me some Tops barbecue. Of course, I never eat the barbecue. I always get the turkey burger. But still, uh, then after when Tina finally, let me tell y'all, I got to tell y'all. Wait a so, minute now. You know, okay, so go ahead. I'll let you finish. So, okay. So, so while I'm waiting on Tina to finally come and connect with me so I could, you know, we could uh, move into our weekend plans, I had, she said, well, I'll be there around this time. I'm like, dang, what am I going to do with another hour? I said, I know what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to go around the corner on Madison to the wig shop. Yes, I did. I said, let me give me a new wig. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I went to. He was uh, cute that, too. Yeah, I went in one way and came out another. And thank God I got there right in time because it was like five fifteen, and she was about to close. And I quickly bought a wig. And by that time, Tina hit me up and said, "Hey, I'm gonna be at the Office Depot." I said, "Office, <laughs> Office Max, the Office Depot." I, said, office. I was like, "Where is that?" I'm thinking, "Oh, she all the way down on Popple." No, the one on Union, the one on Union. I was just like, now, I know I've only been gone four weeks. I know it's only been four weeks, but I'm like, I don't remember an Office Depot or an Office Man, Max. they tricked me. They got me. And I said, she said, the one on Union, not that far from Madison. I said, I think that's a grocery store now. No, no, no. She's going to fight me on it. I said, well, okay. She said, when I get there, I'll let you know. I said, I'm thinking, yeah. okay. I'm trying yeah. to weed. I'm trying my wigs on, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm not going to fight her about Office Depot being on Union. But sure enough, I, about what 15 minutes later, right, right when I'm checking out, she going to call all spastic. You're right. It's a grocery store. When did they do that? I was like, I think like, no, I know. Ain't no nan nan grocery store was right there. All I knew was the former Office Depot. I was needing some ink. And I knew that you would be in the Midtown. So I said, okay, I will go to Office Depot in Midtown and meet Christy Taylor there while I get some ink. Nah, didn't happen. Did not happen. Uh, the only, thing, only thing you was going to get it was Gordon's. Because, you know, that's now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Gordon's. But, of course, those of us who know it, know it, knows that it used to be the quality stamp store. Okay, so my thing really? is that. I think oh. that was a quality stamp store. I, yeah. know that. I remember yeah. quality stamp, but I don't remember that yeah. that being the location of it. Okay. Yeah, it was a quality stamp store that came, became, it eventually became Office Depot, Max, and all that. Because, you know, Office Depot, some, one of them got bankrupt and they turned into the other one. But anyway, wow. uh, now, now it's Gordon's. And uh, sure enough, so then Ooh. I. I'm sorry. Next morning, I uh, got my luggage over to her. They get no ink out of the grocery store. What's up with that, man? <laughs> now you know they really should do that. They really should. They should. As many people really? probably will be driving by there, saying, "Oh, wait a minute, what happened to Office Depot?" Yeah, right. they need to sell some ink. Maybe I should have walked in there. Hmm. Garcia says that the old Office Max by what is now the cupboard. Yes, exactly. That's it. That's it right there. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Office Depot and then became Office Max. And now it's Gordon's grocery store. And uh, yeah, Cynthia, she said, she said, I did the same thing six months ago. So yeah, it definitely, mm -hmm. Gordon's, which of course, if you know where Cupboards is and also with the cookout, which is, uh, what is that, Union and what's the little side street? But anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's a whole nother thing. So by the time we got to her neck of the woods, uh, I was exhausted. I, you know, I was having in travel mode, then I was in waiting with tops barbecue mode, then I was in waiting in wig buying mode. And so by the time we got to her humble abode, I just wanted to chill out. So um we, it seemed like, oh, you all stopped to get something else to eat. And we had not eaten. And let me tell I'm you why. Not. Remember, remember why I was late or delinquent or I kept saying, let me push this back, let me push this back. Because Friday, I did have a, a meeting with the the uh, Beyond the Pod ladies. We were talking about some social media things, and we were able to get that corrected. But we also knew, I also knew, I'm sorry, that I needed some ink in both locations, the um, Bartlett location as well as, well, home. So not that <laughs> I said both locations like the, the downtown. Downtown was good. But Bartlett needed some ink, and home needed some ink. And I knew you had class the next day. And I said, we've got to print some applications all for Christie's students. Uh, let me go get some ink. But because, keep in mind, my washing machine had been out since January, oh. what, seven? And Ooh. finally, the, the washer was delivered a couple of days prior to, but the washer man who installed it was, wasn't was able to get there and get to my home until Friday. Um, so when he called, he's sitting in the driveway at four o'clock. Olivia and I, we were headed towards Office Depot or Office Max or whatever in, in 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 Germantown, you know, in the Wolf Chase area to get some ink. But then he called and said, I'm in the driveway. What? I told you in my mind, I told you that I was going to call you when I got home. I did not tell you to come sit in my driveway now. 
But because he was in a driveway, we had to make a U-turn, go home, let him install the washing machine, let him fix the sink um, because the bedroom sink was when my sink was tripping anyway. It probably I probably use it too much. <laughs> I, I know I use my sink more than Sam uses his sink, but nonetheless, he fixed that too. And I had to wait. It was it was kind of a waiting game. And I'm like, Christy, I can't come to get you yet. I can't come to get you yet. But as soon as he left, I'm like, Christy Taylor, Olivia and I are on the way to get you. But he did throw me. He did throw me off because I, I intended to get some ink before I came to to pick you up. But didn't work I out that know. way. Not only that, was well, there was no doggone Office Depot on Union. Daggone it. Oh, I- Office Depot slash Office Max on Union. Yeah. It is now officially Gordon's. And yeah. So by the yeah. time we get to the house, uh, well, before we do, you all hadn't eaten. So you, I think we went to uh, McAllister. Yeah. Was it McAllister? Yeah. And uh, of course, it, that, I think that was where it was. But no, anyway. we went to McAllister Sunday, Saturday. Oh, we went to McAllister Friday. 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 We did go something. Uh, cause Olivia and I had a bag and it was getting cold. It was some, chi- was it chicken? No, uh, it wasn't a burger. Oh, that's what right. It, girl. it was somewhere. And then, yeah, y'all had to wait for me to do one more thing. And then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had to take so a while my, while our food got cold. <laughs> all I'm going to say is by the time we got to the house, ladies and gentlemen, I had the joy and I didn't mean the joy because I do not have children. Um, and thank God that Tina had hers late in life, so we could still, at, at, this age, at this age, be able to watch cartoons with nobody saying, "Why are you watching cartoons?" Because <laughs> Olivia Disney <laughs> app. Yep. So yeah, we did Disney Plus on uh, Friday night, which I thoroughly enjoyed because they were falling asleep. I don't know if Olivia was falling asleep, but Tina definitely fell asleep on it. Oh I yes. Was, I was watching episode after episode after episode. I was like, I yeah. Cartoon with Olivia. Child, I did. I did. I fell asleep on the two of them. I'm sorry. I told you when I get food in my system and I sit still, I am out. I'm out at least for 30 minutes to an hour or something. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, 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 yeah. So by the time the uh, series ended, uh, I, you know, it was time for us to, you know, get ready to get ready for Saturday. So uh, Saturday here in the m-town yes cynthia she said class yes so um beyond the pod which is an initiative of the podcast center um it's an opportunity and you all can check this out on the website at the podcast center memphis.com that's the podcast mm-hmm. memphis.com click on beyond the pod gives you a lot of details about it but i teach a class and this was the first class of 2024 but the second saturday of every month Uh, We teach a four-hour class from 12 to 4 o'clock. It's an orientation, a required orientation for those who want to have shows on the radio. So uh, it's an opportunity for me to talk about everything from what the uh, the history of radio, the history of podcasting, uh, the required. It is an FCC compliant orientation. So we talk about the um, the FCC and the rules and regulations. And then uh, we take a break and come back. And for those, sometimes they get so engro- uh, engrossed in what I'm doing. They're like, no, we don't need to take a break. We're just going go to go outside for a minute and get some air and come right back. And then I mm-hmm. get into show development. I actually get into helping them develop their shows. Um, and it, it's a very interesting uh, class because everybody helps each other develop their um, their shows from everything from how to start your show, the fact that you have a one hour and how to break up that hour, how to come up with interesting features, all the things and how to, whether you're going to have a music based show or a talk show or a hybrid. So I just really go all in. And, and as, the, as a lot of them like to laugh at me, like I really do enjoy myself doing this. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I thought we were going to try and wrap up early at three o'clock, but no, just like as always, it was four o'clock. Um, but uh, yeah, so we had a good time, and then after that, that is when we went to McAllister's. Yeah. So, and I got, to, but no, but we, though the reason why I wasn't super hungry that day is because Tina's um, the Bartlett location has a uh, a business neighbor that is into real estate, and they had had a, I guess like a class themselves, but they had catered food. Tina, they had <laughs> catered food. For well. Their class. Well, and, you know, and, and, you got that gun to the right, Wendy to the left. And they, um, their catered food, they came and knocked and said, hey, 
we had some we had a class and didn't have a big big turnout so we still have and we're like we beelined over there took the rest you know and they even gave <laughs> look look tina and they gave us souvenir bags at their <laughs> class so I heard of well, you know your class participants don't pay that extra fee for that. So they don't oh. they get what they pay for. You get information that is required to be on that radio or those radio stations. Now we can always boost that fee and say, hey, this comes with XYZ. But nah, uh. nah, you people, you people ain't gonna probably pay that. So I just keep it basic. McDonald's is to the right, Wendy's is to the left. Pizza Hut is right down the middle. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, she. Do, we do give them good directions. Like, yeah, if you want Burger King and Chick Fil A, turn left. If you want McDonald's and KFC, turn right. And yeah, if you want Pizza Hut, yeah. But anyway, I, I will say that it was a good class, a really good class. And I love how for those who have never attended or or have had n never understood what we're doing we really give people who have either like one gentleman had been in radio for like 40 years older gentleman has retired but you know he still has it in him that he wants to engage with radio so giving him an opportunity and then you'll have people who are like business uh, owners who want to have a, a radio show and podcasts that will promote their business or their services mm -hmm. and their products. Well. So, mm -hmm. and, then, and then you'll have people like uh, Entertainer King Cooper and some other, you know, people who are into this life, like world famous Lavita McCoo, who dropped by. It was great seeing her. Who also yeah. understands the power of, oh, and also like our very own Don Askew Jr., aka Teflon Don. Uh, good morning to you. Who understands hey, the power hey, come of on. And he also has a show and, and, and went through the orientation. So it really is a class that no matter where you are in your life, um, definitely give the address again. Um, okay. Okay. That. Oh, yes. Miss Luella talking about the Office Depot. Yes. She knew about the 5510 popular, but she called herself I did not. From the Office Depot slash Office Max in, on Union because it's, I was in Midtown. But uh, Cynthia, yeah, you can actually go to the website, the thepodcastcenterMemphis.com. That's the thepodcastcenterMemphis.com to get all the details about Beyond the Pod and also the um, required orientation if you're interested. And that is a joint venture between Christy Taylor Consulting and the podcast. And, you know, we have been, you know, oftentimes we would be a little slow on this show is brought to you by. So I'll just say that this show is brought to you by Christy Taylor Consulting, which is in partnership with the podcast center. And we do offer every second Saturday a required orientation. And the next one that's coming up, I think is on the, April the 13th. So mm -hmm. this is a good time to go ahead and reach out to Tina Tilton through the podcastcentermemphis.com website and let her know, yes, I want to come to the class and I love teaching. And one of our, uh, <laughs> Uh, our friend slash uh, Mr. Downtown, who will be uh, taking care of the downtown location, he was in class because he's going to have a show. And I understand, Tina, that y'all was talking about me. Y'all were talking oh, about oh, me. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, and not in a bad way, it's just that we know and understand that you love what you do. You're very passionate about what you do. And I tell the students, even when I call them and speak with them on the phone to explain to them about class, and I'll say, your te your instructor is very passionate about the information that you will be get getting. So this is a for real class that you would need to be in that, that you would benefit from, even if you decide not to put your podcast on the radio stations or on either one of the stations. It's still very valuable information that she can give you that I can't. I am so not a teacher. She is. Go for it. So I, I, I'm a good pointer. I, I'm one of the, what, what, what are those dogs? What's those dogs that be pointing? They're like, that way. <laughs> you, you, you don't know that breed. You know, it's a breed. It may be a beagle. Everybody you know what? You may be right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> for those who go hunting, y'all let us know what type of dog that is. Is that a beagle? Yeah. Oh, I think you're right. says, I need it. Yeah. So go to the podcastcentermemphis.com. That's the podcastcentermemphis.com and get ready for the next class. Because while I did come back to Georgia, I will be back in April for the class. So we're going to do that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And Sunday, I did have a chance to. 
I thought I was going to have Sunday off, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, somebody added a meeting um, beyond our normal meeting. And since we had already been hanging out, we pretty much had already done our meeting, but she added a meeting onto our uh, Sunday. <laughs> Darius. Um, <laughs> laughing at Darius. That's right. right. Said, you have been watching too many cartoons. <laughs> he is right. That is sure where I got it from because I see that Bugs Bunny. I see that dog in the Bugs Bunny cartoon in my vision right now going, it, he's stiff. His body is stiff and he's pointing that way. <laughs> But it's Darius, dog, what kind know? of dog is that, though? <laughs> Since yeah, you know what I'm talking right. about. That's right. That's right. Uh, Lavelle Salter. Hey, DJ. What up? Good morning. Hey, DJ. We appreciate what it so up? much. Well, that's my weekend recap. And as you can see, it really did blend in very well with Tina's. On Sunday, we did at a meeting in. Wait a minute, Darius said a cartoon dog. But what? Time? Oh, <laughs> no, I don't. I think no, no, no. There is a hunting dog. There is some type of dog that that does what? Well, whatever. Okay, well, move uh, right well, along, I'm there. Just, moving right along. That's right. You know, Tina is a taskmaster, Christy. I know. And and the thing is, let me tell y'all. Let me just say this. And hopefully, she's not. Wait listening. a minute. Let me tell y'all what she did. Even though. I was trying to connect with some other people on Sunday because I knew I was leaving out Sunday night. And I was like, oh, we got to go back to the podcast center on Sunday after my four hour class on Saturday. Okay. So I just told everybody to show up to the podcast center, do whatever <laughs> I need. <laughs> and, and hopefully she's not listening. But she said, uh, that's quite a few people coming by while we're working. I was like, oh. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, Corey says, y'all balance each other well. Thank you, Corey. But when I tell you, I had to call a couple of people and say, don't come. <laughs> no, 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 no. Corey, Corey. Uh, no, 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 no. No, 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 it's, no, it's my turn. That's, that's your side of the story. So let me tell you what my <laughs> part of my, my side. So Sunday, yes, we did have to go to the pod, or it was it was in our best interest to go to the podcast center again. Trust me, this was not my. I'm, uh, if you if you had to ask me, I would have sat here Sunday and just enjoyed Miles Monroe and Creflo Dollar on my TV like I sometimes do. But because our program director for Bumper ninety six point three, Howard Q, he is such. What's the word for Howard? Because you know sometimes my COVID brain kicks in and I can't find my words. What is it's the word? Lot. What kind of, what a person is he? What's his personality? He's a, well, ambitious, persistent, um, yeah. definitely okay. uh, extremely thorough. He is, uh, yeah, he, he he's a yeah. business about business. Get get business done. Yes. Get done. you get it done. And because he had a lot of questions that that were best answered in person with Christy Taylor being here, my thought was let's utilize the time while she's here. Let's go to the podcast center, meet Howard Q, and let on him Sunday. be able to answer on Sunday. Yeah, and let him a ask these questions that that he has. Even he, you know, and I do understand that he even had some for me. But you know, the the but the majority of it was catered towards you. Like Christy, what can we do, Christy, Christy? And 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 I understood because again, I again, I'm the cartoon dog, Darius. I point Howard to Christy because <laughs> that technical side of everything that we do, uh, especially when it comes to the, these radio stations, that's not me. I said the behind the scenes, technical, how to program it stuff. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Right here, contact her. She's got the she's got the behind the scenes information. I'm She's telling you on how to get this done. So, okay. so because of that, I said, all right, well, let's let's just meet Howard at the office. Now, mind you, as you say, ladies and gentlemen, I, ladies Sunday and morning, gentlemen. Sunday morning, I had gotten up, I had gotten up, prepared breakfast, washed, uh, uh combed my daughter's hair, uh, uh, put the dishes in the dishwasher, uh, just other things. And then I'm like, Chris Taylor, you ready? No, I'm still getting dressed. What? What girl? Wait a minute! I done let the dog out. Fed the dog. Fed the daughter. Ooh, cleaned the kitchen. Got myself fixed. Got myself dressed and ready to go. And she's still. I'm still getting ready. <laughs> so, oh Lord, Lord, y'all single people that don't have no obligations. Manage your time, people. Manage your time. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I was ready. I was ready to go to the office, but then again, only to find out that I was an hour and a half too early. 
Maybe is that uh, what? No, uh, yeah, I think it was. <laughs> I think you said no. We don't have to be there until one thirty. Oh, oh, it's twelve thirty. Two o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. My bad. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can slow it down then. Right. Oh, Tina said. Corey said, Tina, you should have known that was a two-hour process. Hype them out. Go ahead. <laughs> I know. I know. But 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 it, it was good to be there. And uh and Myra Mays even came through. So that, that must have been one of the contacts that you didn't tell not to come through because you told Myra Mays to come through. Right. Yeah, I needed him to come through. Yeah, yeah, that there. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you know he owned the pack mail on Union as well as he owns one that he just sold, I think, and he also owns one in West Memphis, Arkansas. And I had gone to Georgia and still had the key to the post office box, so to the little uh, mailbox. So I had to make sure I got him that, and he he was kind enough mm -hmm. to bring. To personally mm -hmm. deliver me my mail, um, but the benefit of him coming in the in the podcast center is he kept he kept drooling over the microphones. Like yeah, 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 like yeah. He said he said if he stayed yeah. there one more minute longer, he's gonna get on that microphone and not come back or not get off of it or something like that. We're like, yeah. come on, we got, we got podcasting space for you, you know. And if we don't, you're Myra Mays. We're gonna make it for you. Come on now, you know how we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but but while we were there, Christy, I do want to say thank you so much for asking my daughter many, many questions about what she wanted to do with her life. Because of course, her parents, we've asked her, she's told us, but for her to hear it or for you to hear it from her, I'm sure you, uh, even for me sitting there listening to her, it was a different experience for me. My oh. daughter has a true interest in dance. She likes to dance. And um, Christy, I'll let you tell tell that story of how you got Olivia to talk about her dancing experience. So as we're about to go into, uh, before Howard Q arrived and all my other <clears throat> people who weren't supposed to be there, uh, I, I, do, I did ask her, I was like, well, what do you want to watch? And then it ended up being a situation where she wanted to watch uh, about the majorettes, because that's one of the questions that we've been talking about. And when Tina shared with me that, Olivia had interest in being a majorette. I was like, well, she could get a, a, a full scholarship, an entire <laughs> scholarship to college um, being a majorette, you know, whether you're in the band, you know, because I was in choir. So I'm very much uh, into supporting those kind of creative talents and knowing that, yes, it is a pathway to college other than, you know, academic and sports. So here we go. We then said, let's watch it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so yeah, and then uh, Olivia said, "I'm gonna watch the J sets." And that, Christy said, "The what?" I said, "Oh no, the J sets." <laughs> and that's because her auntie Amy apparently has turned her onto the J sets, and I did not know that that was the actual mm -hmm. name of the ma uh, majorettes at Jackson State University. And I yeah, I could tell you almost sounded as if my child was trying to get you to watch porn. The J sex? I no, no. S e t t e s. Because you said the what? <laughs> now see, this is what me and Tina are different. I would have said more like the Jetson, the Jets. Okay, that's cartoons again. Anyway, uh, I will just say that we ended up pulling up YouTube and watching the J sets, and of course, we finally found one that actually where they were in a parade with the uh, the band, the Sonic Boom. And J sets are uh, Jackson State University majorettes, by the way. That is correct. The Jackson mm -hmm. State University's um, major at dance team. Mm -hmm. And they're actually, the name is the Prancing J-Sets. And they, yeah, of yeah. course, oftentimes march and do, you know, performances with uh, the ten I mean, with the Jackson State Son um, Sonic Boom. I hope I'm saying that right. And the sh short story is that as we got into it, I think we get more involved in watching it than she did. But <laughs> once we got into our meeting, I think she kept watching it. But by the time we came out of our meeting, she was back to cartoons. So at some point, she was like, okay, that's enough with the prince and Jay said. But I, I'm glad to see that. And I did stress to her. I was like, now, you know that... Um, to to major to be to be a majorette, you are gonna have to have a degree. So, what do you think you're gonna want to do for your college degree? And she said, I don't know. And one of the <laughs> I gotta tell her this part, Tina. Uh, okay. She said she talked about how 
her auntie, you know, Amy is, you know, bakes is a baker and she also loves fashion. So she's really yeah. into that. I said, well, I said, well, you can, she said, and I also wouldn't mind working for a grocery store. I said, well, that's definitely, this is how you guide a child. I said, that's definitely something you can do when you're in high school and college. Yeah. You can, and, you can, and tell, you and tell can my baby to be a manager, be a manager. <laughs> I said, but when you do it, um, you just want, I said, you could be uh, in the bakery department of the grocery store, but you want to be the manager. So you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> she did. But she did. That is what she told my baby. <laughs> but one of the reasons I said it is because she also said, in addition to wanting to work for a grocery store and also doing like an auntie and baking cupcakes and cakes and, and also doing fashion, uh, she said, but eventually I want to take over mom's business. And that's how she said it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, wish you, I, said, okay, okay. I said, okay, so you want to, I said, well, that's good. You want to take over the podcast center. I said, well, then definitely you are going to want to do management because you're going to have to manage the podcast center businesses. And she just kind of looked, she didn't say, okay, but I think she just kind of like let it sink processing. in. Yeah, yeah, processing. processing. So it's like, yeah. So you can work for a grocery store, preferably one of the ones that have a really great bakery department. And also you can do, you know, fashion and prancing day sets on the side while in college, while also getting a degree in business management administration or something so that you can manage the family's business. So I just try to, um, you know, plant those seeds. <laughs> and my baby said, I can work two jobs. That's what she, she said. Yes. Oh, Lord, baby, that's not the goal in life. But okay, yeah, you can work two jobs. <laughs> well, one is a business, so she can work a job and also, you know, learn to, the, the, yeah, eventually take over the podcast center. But yeah, in the yeah. meantime, in the meantime, yeah, that was an interesting conversation. So I don't it know. Was. I don't know and Olivia, she will ask questions after people say something because I always like, well, what is she going to say about what Miss Christie said? <laughs> no telling at all. But you're right. Just from us, the, the, the two adults there watching the dancing. No, I'm sorry. What you said? Prancing, prancing major. The prancing. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I said that. I, you know, I was just I was mesmerized. I ain't gonna even tell you wrong because I'm I'm watching them. I'm looking at their dance moves going, oh, never could I do that. But at the same time, envisioning my child doing it and going, you know what? Given a little talent, given a little uh, uh, skill and, and trade and, and experience and, and training. My child actually can do this. But I also was. Yeah. But I also began to wonder. Like where in the world did, because at one point the majorettes were, you know, marching and the whole band and everything was, were marching in a neighborhood and we could tell it was, you can remove the neighbor part off of it. You can tell it was the hood because yeah, of the right. houses and the people that were on the porches of these houses, <laughs> you could tell they were in the hood, which is okay. I'm not, I'm not downgrading, downgrading it, but I, I'm just looking at it going, where in the world did the black culture how did the black culture come to this how 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 did we get here oh wait well, you know course, something I'm not just, oh, I tina tilson guess who just showed mm -hmm. up look, look who's good morning amy neely she said good morning ladies oh, I'm flattered. yes ott is gonna have to buy her whatever she wants so basically uh oh, Auntie TT, uh amy she wants to be a, a high fashion baker so we can get her yeah. to go to high school and preferably she'll work for like a fresh market. Look, look, this is me. Fresh market or Whole Foods. But she can do Kroger. She can do Kroger. Uh, you know, bakery that she's doing all these high profile, you know, and then we're going to have to teach her to have a little side business so that she can cater on the side. <laughs> but also oh, in, high in high fashion. Yes. So, yes. I don't hear podcasts in a nowhere in there. How you gonna just tell Amy to get, well, you? You have grown Olivia's life. Well, I'm the, that's college. That's high school and college. While she's getting her business degree, so that she can manage the podcast. Now we can look. She got to be ready for the podcast center because we're trying to make it global. Oh well, yeah, that is true. All right, bake away, baby, bake away. <laughs> And if she knows how to grow a, a a catering business doing bakery and fashion, maybe designing her own packages, then she'll understand, you know, growing and scaling a business. So when she adds that into the podcast, and I know, I know, 
Christy Taylor mm-hmm. Consultant, mm-hmm. Hey, Auntie Christy. Uh, yeah, we put on the pad, baby. We put on the pad. But anyway, yeah. so the history, I remember you. Okay, so, so as yeah, you, you know, know I said it, I said, oh. You know, I said it. I said, I got to have it. I got to find out where did this come yeah. from? So, where did it come In- from, Tina? Because I know Inquiry you know. minds. Yeah. Inquiry minds want to know. I don't know what side I was on, but nonetheless, it says HBCU because that's what I had to look up. I'm like, ah, oh, these come from, you know, these this type of dance comes from historically black colleges and universities. So I saw an article that says HBCU dance teams bring infectious energy and it's and excitement to sports games. Of course they do. Pep rallies, uh-huh. Parades, uh-huh. Through their high energy, energy synchronized style of dance. I said, that show is what it is. That's what I saw them four girls doing down the hood. Well, I was Wasn't creepy. Them, yeah, and those young men, the drum, what is the drum line? Come on, the drum, drum majors. The drum majors were great too. Yes, they they really were. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a collective thing. And I, again, for me, I just wonder how in the world did our culture get right here? But anyway, it says in the 1960s, majorettes majorette dance teams rose in popularity at HBCUs, infusing jazz, West African, and hip hop dance styles. And I said, mm, lies. Hip hop was not until the 80s, but how y'all get in the no hip hop was not until the 70s. Early in the 60s, it actually okay, wait, no, wait, no, wait. no. Hip hop was 1972. 50 years of hip hop. Continue. Yes. On. This says 1960s, though. So I said, mm-hmm. They they may infuse it now, but they didn't infuse it then. But anyway, according to <laughs> Essence, <laughs> the original majorettes or I cannot even pronounce this word because it's in Dutch. These, they were Dutch ladies. They were carnival dancers who used batons. That's where they came from. The majorettes came from Dutch that used batons. And I did think about that. And I just told Olivia maybe a week ago, I said, baby, majorettes use batons too. And they have a baton training class going on now somewhere out there, somewhere in Bartlett's, one of those Bartlett's um, community centers. I, okay. I thought about taking her to that, but and I asked her about it, and she said, nah, she didn't want to use her fingers. Girl, I probably <laughs> should have introduced it to her anyway, because yes, that would, you yes. know, that would set her apart. You know what I'm saying? That's because, right. yes, the, the, the dance teams and the majorettes that we saw just recently, the, the prancing J-sets and stuff, they did not have batons, but batons are amazing. That is an amazing skill that I even tried. I think, I know Amy, Amy, did you used to twirl? I could twirl a little bit, but you know, when we were growing up back in the day and watched our majorettes, Christy, I'm sure y'all had some in Millington too. Those twirlers, they caught the attention of all. Everybody. And and the thing is too, is that they did more choreographic moves that also included high marching, uh, and remember, and you brought this up. We, they used to have tassels on the boots, so everything, mm-hmm. the fringe, the fringe on the outfits, all the things, the twirling. My sister used to twirl. My she did. Twirl. My sister used to twirl, and she could double dutch, and you know, like comp- competitively, she used to. She almost got into competitive um, double dutching. Yeah, wow. that was back in our DC early years. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you think she can train today's young ladies? Somebody got to train these babies. Batons can't die. We got to let the batons live. They can't die. <laughs> I'm serious. Okay. Does anyone know how to do that? Does anybody know how to twirl the batons? Okay. Yeah, we'd like to know. Okay, okay, but I will. I will continue. It says, it wasn't until the idea reached the American South's high schools and colleges that it became that it came to uh, include a mixture of jazz, ballet, and hip-hop dance. The first known majorette performance dates back to 1968. Alcorn State University's majorette oh, team called the Golden Girls. You know, that's what Avery calls us. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got to let them know that we majorettes from the Alcorn we back are. in the day. I know, back in the day. Made their debut at the 1968 Orange Blossom Classic against Florida A&M. They wore long golden boots and gold capes. I said, we sure did. The majorette sure did you wear that. A classic majorette look that carried on to today. That's what it says. But anyway, the original black majorette teams were known for their intricate headdresses, accented with feathers and rhinestones. They yes. sure did. Sure did. Today, like yeah, today, you know what? 
you know what though, Christy, think about it. Think about the Macy's Day parades that you don't watch. The yeah. the, the women in those parades, they still adorn. <laughs> <laughs> they still have the big feathered headdresses and stuff. That is true. The, well, the, I will the go other Carnival, we don't Mardi Gras. Yeah, yeah, Carnival, yeah. Mardi Gras. They, they still do all of the pageantry. Yes, yes. I would yeah. go to that instead of the Macy's Parade. Yeah, go ahead. Well, well yeah, we, we need to pick that back up. We don't we don't drop that ABCUs. What y'all doing? Mm, y'all need to figure this out. <laughs> yeah, it says, but today they're known for their and this is the uh, the majorist for today, the, the costumes. Today, they're known for their extravagant glittery outfits, fringe and statements gloves that emphasize their movements, which made me think about Howard Q when he was in the office Saturday, I'm sorry, Sunday, saying that, uh, how did he say it, Christy, that the, the, someone got sued, TSU? Yes, uh, <laughs> one of, yeah, back in the day, because they had a, a, a height, uh, I think they had to be, what, what 510. 510, it had to be 510, mm -hmm. yes, 510, uh, but they got sued because they felt that that was a height, discrimin uh, discrimin height discrimination. And mm -hmm. even though uh, they eventually, he won the, the lawsuit, but eventually the, the university changed the height requirement to be a majorette. Yeah. So that means but, but Tina Tilton, you could be a majorette. Yeah, no, they don't want to see Tina Tilton as a majorette. But I understood why the ladies had to be so tall because, like he said, the the uh, the original ladies had to be tall because you have to be able to see the movements from the very top of the football stadium when they're performing. And right. and and little bit little bitty short women like myself, you can't see our legs and our arms moving nowhere. You could probably just see some tassels <laughs> <laughs> going to the left or to the right, but not any real. You know, uh, uh, accented oh, movements, like, and I said, "Man, that is right. Okay, I can see that." But you know, it, it is what it is. Everybody, everybody, just everybody. But anyway, the majorette dance style is a very unique mixture of stunting, marching, and very energetic, clean movements rooted from the south. No, wait, wait a minute. Rooted from the southern areas of the United States. One of the know, um, the dance. Go ahead. So, so going back to the Southern roots, because I know even to this day that there is a lot of what you're talking about in like New Orleans and, you know, they have a lot of different things. Even when it comes to funeral processions, they do, they go all out with the pageantry and all the things. So definitely. Go, funeral continue. procession? What funeral procession? I didn't see that oh, come out of Rita Franklin. Okay. I didn't New see Orleans, that. They, New Orleans, they, they do horns and everything. They do entire parades when people pass away, depending on who they are and stuff. And oh, they go all oh. out. They go all out. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Continue on, though. Continue on. Glory, okay, glory. The captain, Deja Wright, the captain of the Golden Girls, told Essence HBCU majorette style dance is important, not only to HBCU culture, but to black culture as a whole. And I said, oh. there you have it right there. And I knew that. But that's why we were like... Thank you. He's, okay. he's informing us that it's called a second line. That's what they do in New Orleans when it comes to those processionals. The second oh. line. Continue on. Okay. That's another history okay. lesson that we can look into. <laughs> yeah. It's also continuously being praised, receiving, turn the page, widespread uh, recognition in the media. <laughs> <laughs> from Beyonce's historic 2018 Coachella performance. Did y'all see it? I missed it. I need to go oh, back and look at yes. it now. Yes, you do, because she had an entire uh, college band and all the things. Yes. That in, yeah, her a whole entire. Yeah. Yeah. We, we'll, we'll bring you up to speed on that. Mm -hmm. Was that similar to Usher's um, Super Bowl performance? Yes, exactly. Yes. A black oh, band yeah. style. Oh. oh. Did they have black Darius Moore said black band styles are being gentrified as we speak. Well, I got to insert that is true, but I hope. In what way? Can, well, I'll just say it like this. Uh, for those who have been on the Instagram lately, someone have resurrected a performance by a very uh, Eurocentric choir, maybe in German, Germany, where they're doing Kirk Franklin stomp. Wow. Okay. And, and. and Lately, I've been going through something that really got me down. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yes, it no, it's is. not. Yes, it Are and they dancing a, too? No, they, 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 they,
doing Kirk Franklin part, she is having the time of her life. She is doing all the ad lib and everything. Now they may not, I think, you know, true enough, everything is appropriated that we do. Come on, Mickey D's right now. We call Mike Donald's Mickey D's and then they took it over and then added their own marketing team. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> well, no, it, it, it kind of stops there. It, and it just, the last sentence says that it's safe to say that HBCU dance team's relevancy and impact is substantial. Yes. Of course, you got of it. You course. got it pouring into. Yeah, you got it pouring into the American society. And perhaps it should have been 68. Here we are. 2024. Come on now. Oh, it it yeah. probably should have. Yeah, it should have already been kind of introduced to the American culture as a whole and not just the African-American culture. However, yeah. we'll embrace it. We love it. We want you to we want you to march down the hood. As a matter of fact, I asked Christy, I said, what can we do with our stations and and start something like this? Because this brings pride. It does. It felt good to watch it. And, and I felt prideful. I felt I'm black and I'm proud. That's what I wanted to say. I'm like, Ooh, man, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm black and I'm proud. Come on. Man. That's, a, that's what we can call it. The black and I'm proud uh, parades. Oh uh, no, they may get it. They may get it a little mixed up, so we may have to say something else because I ain't that kind of proud. But I'm, I, I'm happy to be black. I'm just saying. Corey D. Garcia said, "Sister Act Two made gospel choirs um, predominantly overseas. That is true. That is true because the Catholic, yeah, the, the, yeah. When Whoopi directed those old nuns singing those songs, even though mm. Lauren Hill that is true but y'all need to find this let me tell y'all it is hilarious i really enjoyed it a lot of people like uh how can they how they clapping off the beat and still going in with stop it was like, like <laughs> oh i like, gotta see it then let me tell you uh darius was look at the commercials the culture uh the culture vultures don't play no they don't play they don't play but i will tell you this because oh, i know because I did attend uh, Millington Central High School, and I just think about the choir, the concert choirs, and when we would do uh, high spirited songs, sometimes gospel songs, and mm -hmm. also when I attended Oral Roberts University, and I just think about the times when they would sing like "Oh Happy Day" and some of those old gospel classics. I was sure. looking at the video saying, "Is this what we look like? Is this what we look like?" When I was in some of those choirs, girl, and like and they were really excited. Oh my God, we're gonna sing Walter Hawkins or you know, like uh Edwin Hawkins, oh happy day, and yeah, oh happy day. You know, to us, I yeah, guess we yeah. sounded all so we sounded like uh <laughs> Sister Act Two choir, but I wonder what we what I'm thinking, were we list were we sounding more like this German choir? <laughs> 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 oh man, we got we we got to oh we we you got to show me that one. I really need to see that one. Matter of fact, since we I, I, I can I can I get a different um can I get a different background music or song for today's topic because I feel real marches. I feel like I'm ready ready to march like a major rep before I give you all this word word up. Okay, you, you, we, got something, we got something different. You got something you could give me. Oh, Matter of fact, while you're see. finding something, some, while you're searching, my sister used to be a majorette. So big shout outs again to my Gosh. sister, Amy. She was a majorette for wow. Longview. Okay, Longview. There you go. Oh. Longview Middle School? Yeah. Shut the noise. Well, okay, I got feeding yeah. the ducks. No, we don't want that. Uh, dance no, oh, no, no, don't. We don't want no. that. Uh -uh, I need I something that's going to make me sick. You got something? Okay, okay Ooh, hold on. Give me some. Here we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, in the Bible, Psalms 149 and 3 says, Let them praise, let them praise his name with dancing. Praise him with tambourines and dance. In 2 Samuel 6, 14 and 22, David dances before the Lord with all his might, providing us with a wonderful example of what it truly means to surrender to God in a worship. He also danced out of his clothes, but I'm gonna tell y'all, keep your clothes keep your on. Clothes on. Some of y'all's bodies ain't ready. Some of y'all's bodies ain't ready. That's it. Get that word up in your spirit today. Thank y'all for coming out. God bless. Good night. Come on, Christian. Take us out with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>